In this video, we will be discussing general chemistry concepts of total petroleum hydrocarbon, or TPH. First, we will talk about crude oil, including its composition and how it is refined into complex mixtures of petroleum products. These refined gases, fuels, and oils can all be categorized as TPH, but what is TPH exactly? To answer that question, the last portion of this video will touch on TPH's definition and how it can be used to characterize a petroleum release to the environment. To better understand the chemistry of petroleum products, we must first establish how they are refined from crude oil, which is depicted in this animation. Here, crude oil is shown on the left where it is superheated in a boiler and becomes vapor, and then sent through a distillation column where the vapor rises and turns back into liquid at different temperatures. This distillation process separates the crude into hydrocarbon mixtures by weight, which is shown by the number of carbon atoms. You can see this number in the circle in the right side of the animation. Those mixtures with only a few carbon atoms, which are generally the lighter end compounds like bottled gas, which has four carbons, as well as naphtha and gasoline with eight carbons, are distilled at much lower temperatures than the middle distillates like kerosene and diesel, followed by the heavy end oils and residuals with up to 88 carbon atoms. Although crude oil has been separated by weight, each of the refined petroleum products is still a mixture that contains hundreds if not thousands of compounds, which may include single bonded alkanes, double bonded alkenes, cycloalkanes, and aromatics. We'll discuss more about the chemical structures of these compounds next. Among the universe of over 10,000 compounds in crude oil, we can categorize them by their chemical structure in addition to their weight. For our purpose, we will be focusing on hydrocarbons, defined as compounds made up of hydrogen and carbon, which are divided into the two classes of compounds on the right. The first compound class is aliphatics, which can occur as straight or branched chains and non-aromatic rings. The second class is aromatics, which typically contain at least one benzene ring. Note, there are many non-hydrocarbon compounds, including heteroatoms, which are defined as non-hydrogen, non-carbon atoms like nitrogen, sulfur, or oxygen, as well as inorganic sediments, metals, and water. We'll discuss more about the chemical structures of refined petroleum products next. Although the refining process helps to separate petroleum hydrocarbons by weight and number of carbon atoms, these refined fuels and oils are still complex mixtures. For instance, gasolines have been estimated to consist of 200 to 2,000 compounds. This chart shows the typical carbon ranges for several types of refined fuels and oils. You can see that gasoline has a range of 4 to 12 carbon atoms, while diesel fuel has a range of 8 to 24 carbon atoms. Heavier end oils can range from typically 20 to over 30 carbon atoms, and lastly, crude oil can span from 1 to over 40 carbon atoms. Now that we understand the universe of compounds present in refined products, how do we collect TPH measurements in different environmental media? The answer lies in the TPH analytical method that is selected. I really want to stress this point, as the analytical method defines TPH and provides an approximate concentration of total hydrocarbons in a complex mixture, in addition to hydrocarbon size and distribution in the environment. Ironically, TPH is not necessarily total, not necessarily all from petroleum, and not necessarily all hydrocarbons. Confused yet? To make things a little easier, ITRC defines TPH as hydrocarbons only, which are compounds made up of hydrogen and carbon and are divided into aliphatics and aromatics. When investigating TPH in the environment, TPH can be measured when characterizing the release source and after it has weathered. Once TPH is in the environment, it can migrate from one medium to another through partitioning. For example, TPH from a release area could dissolve into soil leachate and migrate downward into groundwater. Once in groundwater, TPH could volatilize into soil vapor, emanate up through the unsaturated zone, and through building cracks into indoor air. Therefore, it's really important to understand TPH source and migration pathways when selecting the appropriate analytical methods and media for your site investigation. If you are interested in obtaining additional information on PVI, LNAPL, or TPH, please visit the following ITRC websites, which contain links to both guidance documents and fact sheets. 
The Interstate Technology and Regulatory Council is a nonprofit research program of the Environmental Council of the States. ITRC is a state-led organization composed of over 1,000 members from state agencies, federal government, tribal and international organizations, the private sector, academia, and community stakeholders. Members participate in technical teams which produce guidance, tools, resources, and training materials. If you'd like to be a part of ITRC, please visit the ITRC website at itrcweb.org. You can register for teams and learn more about how you can be an active member. ITRC's usage policy is available on the ITRC website. If you do plan to use ITRC materials, we ask you to review that policy in detail and be sure to credit ITRC. ITRC does not warranty the material nor endorse any specific products.